South Florida. This is Headliners, only on CBS News Miami. Hi there and welcome to Headliners. I'm Lauren Pastrana. We are past the peak of hurricane season and for those who call South Florida home, preparing for a storm feels like second nature. But South Florida's population has grown and newcomers may not know what storm preparation looks like. CBS News Miami's Chelsea Jones is in Miami with what you need to know. So there are many mitigation efforts in place to help you out. Behind me is a floodgate is partially open and how it works is that the water from drains in your neighborhood flows to this river and then ultimately is dumped into the ocean. It helps with reducing a flooding. OK, so then we also got this pamphlet that was passed out in Miami Gate County to residents and it's for hurricane preparedness to help you before, during and after the storm. And though we are being spared a significant impact here in South Florida, it is time to get ready for hurricane season now. It was just like any other day as people mold around Home Depot. We wanted to know if they were ready for weather impacts of Helene. Most were. I had all of my paper, my food, ready for my dog, everything ready, you know. In the event of a storm, you know the basics. Secure your outdoor furniture, sandbag outside of your home, and board up windows, especially if you live in an area prone to storm surge. In the event that you lose power, you might want to have a generator for your home, but you also want to make sure you have cash so that you can get fuel to power up one of these bad boys. You also want to make sure you have batteries, flashlights, and battery-powered radios. Residents like Gloria De Castillo say she has the routine down. Gas up my car, those buy the essentials for food essentials and make sure I have all flashlight batteries and uh, all those battery run radios and all my phone charged. In the event that you lose access to your refrigerator, you gotta eat. So canned foods is where you're gonna go. Something like this, ravioli in a can. Myra Jimenez says that's how she prepares. Just buy water, water and food, that's it. Items you may forget but need are a manual can opener, an extra set of car keys, cash, and bedding like a sleeping bag. Something that's also recommended is you having a first aid kit on hand in the event of a storm from damages that might be from wind or something like a hurricane. Helene may pack strong winds and rain for South Florida, but Floridians who are used to it say they're ready. Tell you the truth, just praying. So within these pamphlets comes these door hangers. As you can see, it says help and OK. And in the event of a major storm, you would hang this on your door to signal to emergency management that either you're OK or you need help. Now, they do say that power and water outages does not constitute an emergency, so you would not use the red hanger for those. In Miami, I'm Chelsea Jones, CBS News, Miami. The city of North Miami has passed a resolution condemning hateful, radical, and anti-immigrant comments targeting Haitians. The move comes after controversial comments made by former President Donald Trump about Haitian migrants eating pets. CBS News Miami's Nakaya Carrero has reaction to the resolution. The city of North Miami Council is unique. Out of their five members, four of them are Haitian, including the mayor himself. I spoke with two of them who say the comments that were made had a personal impact, not just on them, but the city as a whole. It's very hurtful. It's very um, painful. And we are dealing with, with the effect of, of, of those words, of those remarks. Before he was the mayor of North Miami, Alex Desolme was a Haitian American. He says he's not alone as a good majority of the city's population is also Haitian. Immigrant folks like myself, we come here you know, to work hard, um, and that's that's what we are. He said the comments made by Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump and vice president candidate J.D. Vance regarding Haitian immigrants hits home. They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets. The city's vice mayor, Mary Estimate Irvin, who also is a chairwoman for the National Haitian American Elected Official Network, has said the comments have had a negative impact on not just Haitian adults. Last week, um, high schoolers, um, some of them, they want to go to school. They're being teased about whether they're eating pets. At Tuesday City Council meeting, each council member took the time to express their concerns regarding the comments before passing the resolution unanimously, with the hopes that it sends a message across the area. First of all, immigrants have been the fabric of this community and that even though we are we are different, we are diverse and we should be included and hate should never be in our speech, period. 
The North Miami mayor also shared in the meeting that he wrote a letter to the mayor of Springfield, Ohio. He also said he's looking into taking a trip to the city. In North Miami, Nakaya Carrero, CBS News, Miami. When headliners return, see how officers in Miami-Dade County are using new tech to keep students and teachers safe amid a recent rise in threats. From South Florida, this is Headliners, only on CBS News Miami. Welcome back. I'm Lauren Pastrana. More than 30 new Florida laws are set to take effect in a matter of days. At least one of them comes with controversy, but lawmakers say they're all to protect you and your loved ones. CBS News Miami's Morgan Reiner breaks down what you need to know. Arguably one of the more notable laws going into effect next week is one that essentially bans people from sleeping in public spaces like sidewalks and parks. While this law does provide those experiencing homelessness with more resources, the critics are concerned about how it is going to be enforced. Some of the resources that are provided to those experiencing homelessness is temporary shelter, drug and mental health treatment. But if help is refused, jail time is on the table. Here in Miami-Dade, the county is working to free up shelter space to accommodate this law. The commission approved the plan to purchase a hotel in Cutler Bay to convert it into subsidized housing for low-income seniors. Another law going into effect next week requires transparency about flood insurance during the sale of a house. HB 1049 requires a disclosure before the time of sale, which says homeowners insurance policies do not include coverage for damage resulting in floods. That is a separate policy which must be purchased. And the seller must disclose if they've previously filed a claim or received FEMA assistance because their house flooded. Several other laws are aimed at cracking down on certain crimes. One new law will increase the penalties for retail theft and porch pirates. The law increases the penalty for groups of five or more to a third degree felony. DeSanta said if you steal in Florida, we will catch you and we will prosecute you. Another law protects those who are most vulnerable. The law increases the penalties for those who defraud seniors, minors, or those with mental or physical disabilities. In Miami, Morgan Reiner, CBS News, Miami. Amid a recent rise in school threats across the nation, Miami-Dade schools are looking at taking a new approach to school safety. It doesn't involve walk-through metal detectors. Instead, the district is looking to go high-tech as a means of saving money. CBS News Miami's Joe Gorcho is in Miami with more on what Miami-Dade schools are doing. Everybody, once their child leave out their house, they want their child to return back safe. It's a familiar sentiment for parents across South Florida and the nation. One that's prompted school districts to continuously upgrade safety plans and parents to consider if their children are in the best place to keep them safe. And I just transferred my daughter to this school from another school partly because of safety and security. So The effort to make schools safer brought walk-through metal detectors to Broward County Public Schools this school year. But parents at Miami-Dade shouldn't expect to see the same. Instead, the district tested a new technology over the summer. There have to be new solutions, and one of them is artificial intelligence detection of firearms. Board member Luisa Santos told us nine schools, including the one behind her, used specialized software with existing security cameras to detect if anyone is carrying a weapon outside the school. The blind tests that were conducted by our police department it turned out that the technology is very effective. We went straight to the source to see how it works. The company behind this AI gun detection is called Zero Eyes, founded in 2018, following the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland. America seemed to reel from that one more than, than most of the prior ones, and, and we kind of did some self-reflection. And around that time, our CEO, Mike Leif, who I was with, in the SEAL teams with, he was picking his daughter up from school, and she had just gotten done doing an active shooter drill. And she was visibly upset about preparing for someone to come into her school with the intent to harm children. Former Navy SEAL Sam Alimo helped launch the company, staffed by retired military veterans or law enforcement personnel from their command center in Pennsylvania. He shows us how the technology works. What happens is the moment a gun is exposed, a still frame image comes up, human verifies it is in fact a gun, hits dispatch, client gets it through multiple means. Um, in the real world, we do this in about three to five seconds. Alimo tells us they have 24 clients in Florida. Dade schools might be the next, as Santos believes implementing this technology is a better path forward 
than installing metal detectors. Just acquiring the metal detectors is between 3.5 and 5.5 million dollars and to staff those metal detectors because you can't just have metal detectors without staff um, that would cost us about 17 million dollars a year. Very high cost for something that's not proven effective. Um, we also are concerned about logistics. She tells us the annual cost for zero eyes would be five hundred thousand dollars. If we see a threat or something that needs to be addressed we make sure we're assigned to an officer to make sure they follow up. Even with the new technology being tested and 18,000 cameras currently in use district-wide, the importance of tips remains. Miami-Dade Schools tells us they see more than 100 tips a day on average since school started last month. And this school year, for the first time, they have a full-time dedicated team conducting random sweeps at the schools with K-9 units and wands to detect firearms on school grounds be able to cover more schools and have more more be able to have more quantity of schools covered versus what we had before. Chief Silva tells us that he does plan to recommend to the district to use AI firearm detection technology. Exactly when we can see a vote to approve and a budget for it. Well, board member Luisa Santos tells us that she doesn't have the exact time frame to provide us just yet. However, they are mapping out a path forward. In the meantime, Chief Silva tells us that it's his officers building a rapport with the students that is the best way to keep everyone safe. Reporting outside the Miami-Dade Schools Police Department, Joe Gorcho, CBS News Miami. When we come back, see how a man is using his faith to keep his brother's memory alive and provide a helpline to those in need. That story is next. From South Florida, this is Headliners, only on CBS News Miami. Welcome back. I'm Lauren Pastrana. September is National Suicide Prevention Month, and statistics show law enforcement officers and firefighters are more likely to die by suicide than in the line of duty. In July, a Miami-Dade firefighter took his own life, and last year, the then director of the Miami-Dade Police Department shot himself in the head. It's a topic many prefer to keep private, but that's slowly starting to change. This week, one fallen hero's story through the words of his own brother. He has a bigger heart than me because he's always looking for the underdog, always looking for uh, the person that was in need. That's what made him a great firefighter. Helping people runs in the Alvarez family. Danny Alvarez served his community as a firefighter. His brother, Manny Alvarez, serves his parish as the head priest at the Church of the Little Flower in Coral Gables. Now, Father Manny has a new title, chaplain of the City of Miami Fire Department, a calling that's personal. It's more personal because of my little brother. My little brother was a City of Miami firefighter, was an extraordinary firefighter, it was admired by his peers, was a fearless firefighter, and he took his own life because of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, in 2014. Father Manny says like many first responders, Danny felt his work deeply. In his rookie year when he was working for the Snaples Fire Department and that he was trying to rescue a child, the child died in his arms. And I'll never forget that. And after that, uh, pretty much was tight-lipped about the things that he experienced. And it always worried me, it did, but you know, never thought that it would end up the way it did. Now, Father Manny wants to be a listening ear for firefighters providing counsel and comfort. You know, our first responders deal with so many tragic uh, situations, so many traumatic situations that they just can't escape. If something sticks in their head or sticks in their heart that they want to get unload and, and, and talk about, that, then I'm there for them to be able to talk about it. Did it test your faith? Of course it tests your faith. It has to, uh, because these aren't things that you're prepared to, to, uh, to confront, even though I've confronted as a priest with other families. But you think, oh, as a priest, it's not going to happen to my family. It's not just a concern for firefighters. Police officer mental health is also top of mind a year after the former Miami-Dade police director shot himself in the head. Freddie was just a great guy, and he was overwhelmed. And look what happened. J.C. Prieso is a retired police sergeant and Freddie Ramirez's former partner. He says events like the Surfside building collapse and the on-duty death of Officer Cesar Echi Echeverri have weighed heavily on the department in recent years. As you go through your career and you've seen all these things, you bank them. I like to call the Rolodex in the back of the mind. My therapist told me that. So you see a dead baby, you, you file it. Your partner gets murdered, you file it. And you go through it. And as you go to these calls, you're unable to process. That's the number one thing that really gets us into a bad place. 
Preyeso knows that bad place too well. I would drink right here in this living room until the point of blacking out. And I did that because that's what I call the slow bullet of trauma. Instead of putting the gun to my head, I drank myself to death and it was kind of like my way of trying to just kill myself. And I'll put this here. He eventually sought therapy and started talking about his feelings, something many first responders are often reluctant to do. He's created an online forum called 3 a.m. Fog to help others feel again. There is hope. And by you coming forward and sharing your story, you just put another layer of Kevlar and you're now going to be able to help other people. And so you'll be better. You just got to trust the process. And, uh, and life is beautiful. You just have to want to live it. If you or a loved one needs help, you can call the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline at 988. Now, a touching Miami proud that gives a nod to Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Dana Tabib's childhood cancer journey inspired her career as a nurse manager in pediatric hematology oncology at Broward Health Medical Center. CBS News Miami's Trish Christakis shares her incredible story that took her from patient to caregiver. At only seven years old, Dana Tabib was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia, a diagnosis that forever changed her life. Uh, yesterday was my 45th anniversary of my bone marrow transplant. From 7 to 12 years old, she was fighting cancer. Today, she's helping sweet patients like Anna fight a similar battle. I can never leave work and say, like, I've had a bad day or this is going on because they really put it in perspective for me every day. A nurse that cared for her when she was a patient, Andy Nelson, was more than just a nurse. She turned into a mentor and lifelong friend. She was a great supporter along with um, the physician. Um, we just really connected, made some good personal connections, not only with me, but with my parents, with my siblings. Her relationship with Nelson is what made her want to become a nurse and be what Nelson was for her to her patients. I love to do that. I love to be a part of that. Um, I think it's just that opportunity to pay it forward for someone who did it for me. Her goal is to make patients like Anna not scared of what their new lives will look like. So making moments like this. <laughs> fun for the patient. Really in doing something like that, it allows the child to know like it's okay. You know, um, making it a beautiful a moment for the whole family. And although there are moments that are really tough. Is a warrior is fighting their whole way and they don't have a success story like others. That's a really hard part, but in being um, a nurse here for 14 years, I think one of the things I've learned is you get to take those patients with you. Moments like this. And watching them survive their battles make it fulfilling. In Fort Lauderdale, Trish Christakis, CBS News, Miami. Thanks for joining us this half hour on Headliners. As always, keep it right here to CBS News Miami for up-to-the-minute breaking news and weather 24 hours a day. Make it a great one.